cool. So just let me know if you can see me and you can hear me, and we'll go ahead and get started. Today, what we're going to be doing is talking a lot about rhythm. We're going to be discussing some different rhythm elements, okay? So if you're on YouTube, uh, you can just say hello. I'm going to be able to see your name. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and just throw your name in there so I can see you. Okay, Sophia is here. Hello, Sophia. Awesome. Can you hear me okay, Sophia? <laughs> Good. Okay. Steve Stein guitar. Okay, cool. Chord mastery. All right, good. Uh, Michael says, hey, Steve, from rainy and sad looking uh, UK, Birmingham, UK. Yeah. You know, we've been in a deep freeze here in North Dakota. We've been sub, you know, minus 20, minus 30, minus 40 for about two weeks now. And this week, we're finally going to get over the top of that. So I'm looking forward to that. Hello, everybody. Rich Lando is here. Uh, Sophia can hear me okay. Thank you so much. Chuck is here. And Jeff is here. Harry is here. Thank you so much, everybody. Susan is here. Awesome. Okay, well, what we're going to be doing, everybody, I don't want to waste too much time because I know you've got stuff to do with your life. Um, but what we're going to be doing today is I want to give you some ideas of some things to think about with your rhythm playing. Now, the last session we did, we talked about chords and how to optimize your chord playing, things like that. What we want to do today is we want to try and dig in a little bit more and talk about rhythm. And I'm going to tell you something that I did wrong and try and help you so you don't do the same thing. Okay? Awesome. Lahul is here. Joe C is here. Harsh Deep is here. All right. Catherine is here. Hi, Catherine. Awesome. Just checking to see, looking through this. Okay. And Carl is here. Hey, Carl. Um, all right. We got already have a number of people on here. So let's go ahead and get started. So when I first started learning how to play, and I told you a little bit about this in the last session, first of all, before I even get going here, I just want to remind you um, that everything that we're going to talk about today is on this course, okay? This chord mastery course, it's in there. And what you can do if you want to, you can get access to this course plus 40 additional courses when you sign up for a free trial at guitarzoom.com. So all you need to do is head over to guitarzoom.com. You're going to see a big get started button and you can try it. It's a premium membership. You can try it for free. Okay. See if it's something that uh, you're interested in. So when I first started learning how to play, I was learning how to play patterns like often people do. You know, I was learning... That sort of thing. And I'm not against patterns. If that's what you need to do to learn how to play, I think that's totally fine. But somewhere along the line, you have to learn how to listen to the music and respond to the music with something that, that feels more comfortable. And what I did wrong, not only learning how to play through patterns, but when I first started teaching, go back to when I very first started teaching, I had a class and it was a very successful class and I made my own book and all this sort of thing. And then I had some subsequent classes that came afterward. And, you know, all excited about teaching, I make this, this, you know, booklet that I hand out to everybody, and I taught them like two or three strumming patterns and then some chords, and we played some songs and whatever. And luckily, as we kept going, what I realized that I did wrong was in showing them these patterns and not really talking any more about rhythm, of course, what do I expect from them? You know, they're just doing what I'm telling them to do. And I started realizing that every song that they played, that we would play together as a class, they'd be doing the same strumming patterns for everything, you know? So I taught them, you know, like down, 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 up, down, or whatever it might've been. And they were doing the same strumming patterns for everything that we did. And that's when it started clicking with me that I need to be careful as a teacher, teaching people how to do things like this because they're gonna get stuck just doing that same thing over and over and over, and that's not what I want, okay? So let me, give me just a second here. Let me get that out of there so it's not in the camera picking up all that white in the background. Um, so what I did was I started teaching what I call organic strumming, and that's one of the things I'm going to talk about today, and then I'll try and get into, um, you know, some palm muting things, different techniques like that that might help you as well, okay? So the first thing I want you to understand is when you grab a guitar and you're going to play, and we already talked about this last time, understand that what you're cording hand or fretting hand is doing and what your strumming hand is doing, they're really not synchronized. They're not really friends with each other. When you're making chords or you're playing scales or whatever, it's requ requiring one half of your brain. When you're strumming or making rhythms, it's requiring the creative side of your brain. At least that's what we're hoping for, okay? 
So the best thing that you can do is practice these things independently. So if you're gonna practice rhythm, what I always tell people to do is put on some music that you like. Again, find something that's kind of medium tempo. Don't find something that's way too fast or way too slow or whatever. Just find something kind of in the middle and figure out where you would tap your foot, right? So let's say I would tap my foot right here. That's where I'm gonna tap my foot. Now where I tap my foot is where I'm gonna put my downs in. And when I teach this, what I tell people is start off by just adding some scratching. You're touching all six strings and you're just playing these downs. Okay, so now you're lining up with the music. Now, if you know anything about a lot of pre-recorded music, certainly older music, they didn't always play along with what we call a click track or anything. They just got together in the studio and they played. So the, the tempo of the songs oftentimes will fluctuate. It'll move up and down. This is great practice for you because when you're trying to scratch along with the song, you have to constantly be listening to that song for those kind of realistic changes that happen when humans play together. So as you're listening to the song, you're not just concentrating on you know, your guitar, but you're trying to play along with the beat. And you're always aware that you know, every, at least every four beats, you wanna make sure that you're back on that one, right? So if it does fluctuate a little bit and you get off a little bit, you can get back when the next measure comes around. Okay, so we're listening to the song and we're going one, two, three, four. We're listening. And after a while, what I do is I start concentrating on the rhythm section, right? The drums and the bass, whatever might be happening. So I'm not listening for guitar right now. I'm not listening to a strumming pattern. I'm just trying to find the groove to the music that I'm listening to. And I'm putting this in and I'm following that drummer. Right? And if he speeds up a little bit or she speeds up a little bit, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move with that music. So I'm learning to react by listening. Okay? Not just practice, not just with a metronome or something like that, which is great. I'm listening to real music and I'm reacting in real, in real time to that music. Now, as I get comfortable with that, what I need to always remind myself is as I'm strumming, I always have the power of dynamics. Okay, strumming loud, strumming soft, that sort of thing. I can accent, let me turn down just a little bit. Now, I don't wanna lose the flow of my arm as I'm strumming. I always tell people, think of strumming as using like an egg shaker or a maraca. An egg shaker, if you've ever played an egg shaker, you do this to keep the rhythm going. You gotta keep those little beads or whatever are inside there right? You got to keep them moving. If you stop, they all fall to the bottom and everything stops. And then not only that, but when you start up again, those first couple of beats when you first start up are going to be a little bit off until those beats start shaking again and everything starts moving. Strumming is very much like that for us. When we play, I need to make sure that I understand that my arm needs to keep moving. If I start doing... I'm gonna get this kind of choppy, shaky thing. Sometimes we do that. Like if I'm playing something and I go. There might be pauses in between where I'm gonna stop. And then when I strum, again, I'm gonna flow back in. But there's pauses. If I was doing something that has more continual strum. See, again, this is where I need to keep this ebb and flow, this down and up thing moving, which is what we're going to talk about, okay? But it begins by understanding where to put those downs and understanding that we always have the power of dynamics. We can always strum a little harder or a little softer at different times, okay? So the next thing we need to do then is we need to start realizing that anytime we add these downs, there's always, always an option for an, for an up strum in between those downs, it's your yin and yang, if you will, the ebb and flow, okay? You've got your down, which is your rock, right? Your up is your funky groove. Now, when you put them together, it's not going to feel funky, but as we keep talking about this, you're going to start realizing what, I talk, what I'm, what I'm uh, talking about here. So I've got these downs, and I've, I've established them within the context of the song that I'm trying to strum along to. So now I got these up strums and I can see my hand moving up every time I strum down. I'm not going, okay? It's an automatic reaction that it comes back up. 
There's a wonderful video, if you ever get a chance, Neil Peart from uh, Rush, where he's talking about hitting a snare drum or hitting a drum, and how it's not just a, a one direction kind of thing, but it's a constant flow of that drumstick when you're playing. It's not just hitting the drum, it's the reaction after you hit the drum, and that's really what we're dealing with here. Okay, so as I move, what I want to start doing is adding in that up. Now I've got those downs and ups. Now any song that I'm going to play, realistically, any song that I'm going to play, okay, is going to have an unlimited amount of downs and ups for three minutes or four minutes or whatever the length of the song is, right, as I play. Now what I want to learn to do as I'm doing this is I want to learn how to play organically, as I had mentioned in the beginning. Okay, so instead of thinking about a strumming pattern, as I'm listening to this song, I'm going to start trying to play along, again, not necessarily finding the actual strumming pattern, but I'm going to find something that works with the music. So what I want you to do, if you've never done this before, and you can do this when you get home, you can rewatch this or anything like that, uh, wherever you might be or whatever it is you're doing, what I want you to learn to do is think about playing all of those down and ups, but then at some point what you're going to do is you're simply going to move away from the strings and continue strumming. And then you're going to come back in. Okay? Now, I, no disrespect, but I call this brainless strumming. And the reason I say that is because I don't want you to be concentrating on a pattern. I just want you to feel the movement of keeping the rhythm going, but then moving away from the, the uh, guitar and then coming back like this. There's my downs. I'm going to add my ups. And I'm going to move away. But the rhythm is still there. At any time, I can come back in and move away. Now, when I come back in, I can come back in on a down strum, but you have to learn also to be able to come back in on an up strum. Allow that up to happen. Now, as you're doing this, you might start hearing a rhythm. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, something that makes sense with the song. Now, maybe it's the guitar part. Maybe it's a rhythm in that song that you're hearing. So instead of thinking of it as one E and a two E and a three and all this sort of thing, you start hearing this dun, da dum, ba da dum, and you're thinking, bum, ba -dum, ba -da -dum, and you're allowing the downs and the ups to be where they need to be, you see? Because when we strum, everything doesn't always start on a down. That's when we get into these kind of strumming patterns. And again, I'm not making fun of them. Sometimes we need those. But if we can learn to feel these downs and these ups, and they're all equal, it's, again, as, as many as you can have within four minutes, they're all there. All we're doing is instead of playing every one of them, we move away, and when we want something, let's say I want to come back in on an up. See that? or come back in on a down. And learn to feel that, learn to hear the difference and feel the difference between those, okay? Now as I keep doing that, I can come back out away from the guitar anytime I want. So I might stay here for a while just to get comfortable and then move away for a while, and then come back in, and then move away for a while. As I get comfortable though, what I wanna start doing is spending less time always you know, playing for a long time and then moving away for a long time. I want to shorten some of those up. So my phrasing becomes different, just like speaking, right? So I'm not doing the same thing every time. Now, in the real world, as I'm playing music, it's not like my strumming pattern has to be different for the entire song. It's not that. It's just that I'm, my frame of mind, the way I'm thinking about this is very different because I'm not thinking down, 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 up, down. I'm just playing. I'm just listening to the music and responding as I play. And I guarantee you, if you went to, on many songs, again, this nothing about music and certainly nothing about guitar is always 100%. But oftentimes, if you went to a guitar player and you said, hey, how did you strum that part? Unless it's something that's meticulously mapped out, and again, I'm not talking about like a, I'm not talking about something like that. I'm talking about just strumming. You know, if you just took a strumming song like, again, Take It Easy by the Eagles, and you went up to one of the guitar players and said, hey, how did you strum that? They're not going to say, well, I did down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, 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 up, down, up, down, or because they didn't do the same pattern through the entire song. Some of it's going to be there. Oftentimes, there's going to be kind of a pattern, and then somewhere along the line, it's going to kind of flow away. Some songs very, very much are a strumming pattern, right? If I did... Um,
again, I don't know that it would be exact all the way through, but there's something similar happening there that I would want to try and replicate. Now, as I'm playing that, I'm not thinking about downs and ups. I'm hearing da down da 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 There's my accent. da 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 That's what I'm thinking about. So that's what I'm playing. And in that particular song, the downs are here, and the ups are twice as fast. So that song is really fast. You see? But the, the rules are still there. So depending on the song that you choose, when you start, this is one thing I really want to make sure that you understand. And again, we cover all of this stuff in the Chord Mastery course. If you sign up for the membership, you get this, you get a ton of other courses, and you can just learn all kinds of different stuff. Um, but here's one thing that always confuses people is when you're listening to a song, if you think about this, if you don't know your quarter notes and eighth notes and that sort of thing, just follow along as best you can. But if you think about the relationship between a quarter note and an eighth note, and an eighth note and a sixteenth note, all you're really doing is going twice as fast as, as the other one. So if you decided you wanted to put your downs here, let's say the song was quite slow. So we're going one, two, three, four. Maybe even slower than this. Okay, and I start adding my ups in. Now my internal speed is never this slow. I don't do anything on the planet this slow, ever. Okay, so that might work for you. Like I'm listening to the song and I put the downs in because that's where I would tap my foot and then I add my ups and here I am. Now understand that at that tempo, I have now expelled all of my downs and ups. I'm using them all. I have nowhere to go in terms of energy. If I had done this instead, here's my downs. And that's fine, these are the downs. And if you added your ups here again, I wanna reiterate, this is fine. But I would take these downs right here, and instead of adding ups, I would just go twice as fast on the downs, like this. And now what that enables me to do is at any time, I can go twice as fast like this. Now if I want just the quarters, I'm gonna hit every other one. Now understand, I'm still strumming all of them, like, when I was doing the organic strumming, I'm just skipping the ones in the center. But I can always add them back in, and I can always go here. So what that does is it gives me kind of this, this acceleration of uh, energy that I could use. If I start my downs here, and I add my ups here, I have nowhere else to go. Now if the song is already here, and you're adding these, you know, you. You know, again, there, there's a realism there. Now, again, we're not talking about, you know, speed metal or something like that. That's an entirely different technique where we're maybe just playing one string. Right? That's a different kind of thing. We're still kind of just talking about strumming at this point. Okay? But if you think about that, when you listen to a song, and the more you do this, the, the more comfortable you're going to get with this. Which speed should I be going, right? When I add those downs, is this where I should add these and add the ups here? And if that's what you decide, that's fine. I just want you to enjoy yourself. But if, it's, if you're like me and it doesn't feel fast enough, it feels like everything's just going in slow motion, then you can take all of these and put them all on downs and start adding ups in between there. Now you can always strip away the ups you can strip away half of the ups, or the downs, excuse me. I mean, I can obviously move away entirely, just like I did when I was organic strumming. So I can slow this sucker down as much as I need to, but I do have that availability for that energy push by doubling up on those downs. So if, in summary, if you think about it, instead of going down, up, down, up, down, you're going down, 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 which now gives you those ups. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you, okay? Just make sure we're doing good here. I'm going to scroll down. There's so many videos. Um, <laughs> I felt like banging my head to that beat. Uh, there's so many comments, excuse me. Awesome, great. Well, this is great. So hopefully this is helping you. So understand that, again, it starts with listening to the music and very much in an elementary way, you're just trying to add your downs wherever you feel like the beat should be. Okay, once you've established that, you can add the ups in between, and then you start learning how to organically move away from the strings and come back in. Again, do the brainless part of it first, where you're not really trying to make some big connection, unless you fall into it, unless it feels good. If it doesn't, it's okay to just 
you know, robotically move out and in, and, but, but try not to time it. Okay, that's the point of the brainless part is don't try and make a pattern. Just try and organically move out and in in different places, downs, ups, different things like that, long, short, whatever it might be. And then as you get more comfortable with that, then start learning to listen and see if you can pick up on something. Again, maybe it's not a guitar part. Maybe it's just something that's compatible with the music that you're hearing. Maybe it is the guitar part. It's, it's different for everybody. Um, another quick story I'll tell you. When I was a kid, I remember one of the first songs I learned how to play from my guitar instructor was Old Time Rock and Roll by uh, Bob Seger. And I was so confused because I was listening to the song and I couldn't hear the guitar part. I couldn't hear the guitar strum. I, I was listening going, I don't understand. Like, you know, I had I, whatever that he gave me at the time. I don't remember. But I remember thinking, I, I can't hear the guitar. How am I supposed to play the guitar part if I can't hear it? Well, what I wish he had ex you know, explained to me is what I'm telling you right now. I don't want you to hear a guitar part. I just want you to play along with the song. Okay? Because as guitar players, we often think, well, I'm supposed to be playing the guitar part. Well, maybe you are. It depends on the song. But oftentimes, you just play along with people. Like if all of a sudden you get together with three or four people and you're all strumming on an acoustic guitar and you're playing whatever, right? It's not like you all have to sit there and go, okay, so what are you going to do for a strumming pattern, right? Or, you know, you just play. You just play together. Where some songs, if I'm playing, again, something like that, that's a different kind of thing because I need to be playing exactly what what it is. I can't change that. I can't change it up. It's going to become something else, right? So some songs really do need to be what they are. Right? But when I get to the middle of that song, if you know what that song is, I don't want to get any copyright problems here, but when I play, I can strum this however, however I want. Right? I'm just, this is what I'm doing. As long as my chords move in the right place, I just have to do this. Right? Now, the, the one thing I want to tell you that, because uh, I don't want to take way too much of your time here, but the other thing that I think about is what I call Cro-Magnon strumming. Like, I always think of it like a caveman, you know, clubbing somebody over the head. Sometimes when we play songs, we're not doing this grooving thing. It's not a grooving thing. It's a Cro-Magnon thing, okay? It's a caveman thing. So if I play like that, if I play just that, right? You hear this a lot like in, in ACDC songs and things like that. And I'm going to get to some of your questions in just a little bit as best I can. There's a lot of stuff out there. But um, notice how when I'm playing this, right, I'm punching and it's tight, right? So songs like that, there's a part where it's really tight. Right? So all of a sudden, it's a bit more Cro-Magnon, if you will. And then when it gets to the chorus, it might turn into more of this kind of strummy thing. And when it comes out of it, See what I'm saying? You move back and forth between these two pieces, these pieces of doing this kind of Cro-Magnon thing and this organic strumming thing. It happens all the time. Uh, old time rock and roll strum. Well, you think about the song. Just take those old records off the shelf and sit and listen to them. You know, or you could be approaching it more from a bluesy. You might be doing something like that, and both of those would fit perfectly fine. You see, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Now, what I've always tried to teach students that I've had is, you know, if you come from the heavier side of music, you, you can relate more to maybe the, the Cro-Magnon way of playing, because, again, I'm not being disrespectful, I'm just being honest. When you play things and you're going, um, uh, here's another one you 
see if anybody guesses what this is. So if I go. You see, like a song like that starts off with a lot of this sort of thing. But then at some point, there's a lot of... A lot of this kind of stuff going on, you see? So most songs have a little bit of both of those things in them, okay? So that's what you want to be thinking about is when you play Neon Nights. Very good, Ron. Very good. I'm glad somebody got it. Oh, Simon got it too. Nice. Good. Fellow friends that know this song. This is wonderful. Okay? So anyway, if that makes sense, that's what I want you to be thinking about as you play. If you're doing, now again, even with something where I'm going like this, right? I still have the upstrum in between. It's just that because my downs are so fast, sometimes the transition to down up is a little bit harder to do, but it's still there. Hey, Cody. Glad you're here, bud. See what I'm saying? It's still there. The down up, the uh, the transition from down to down up, just like when you're strumming, is still there when you're playing faster stuff. You see, you, you can still do all of those kind of things. So that's what I want you to be thinking about a little bit when it comes to rhythm: is whether or not your song requires an actual pattern, whether or not it requires more of an organic kind of strumming thing. Now, just I guess before I get back here. Um, when you're playing, I was saying how heavier stuff tends to be more on the Cro-Magnon side, and I'm not saying that negatively. I love heavy music, okay? But because it's so powerful, we tend to do a lot of that kind of thing, right? Where if you're playing more funky stuff, then you're doing more of that. Yeah, that noise is my heater. It just kicked on. I keep forgetting to shut it off when I'm actually doing this. And I don't know that I want it off right now because it's 30 below zero outside or whatever. <laughs> See, so when you play a lot of times, you'll, you'll shift back and forth between those. So if that makes sense, okay, that's what I want you to be thinking about when you're practicing your strumming. And it's just a great thing where, again, you bypass your fretting hand entirely and you just... Well, and when you say you prefer Neanderthal, again, it depends on the style of music that you play. Like if you're playing really funky stuff, if I'm playing like, right, then I gotta, I gotta think about that. Right? Whoops, sorry. There it is. Okay, that sort of thing, right? Then you need a lot of this sort of thing happening. If you're playing more standard stuff, you're right in the second here. But don't get caught up in just thinking about, it is so easy a caveman can do it. Uh, <laughs> That's good. All right, perfect. So what we're going to do then is uh, we're going to stop there. Hopefully this will give you enough stuff to work on for a while. I'll be back on Friday. I don't remember what I'm going to talk about on Friday, but I'll be back at the same time on Friday. So if you get a chance, please join me. Same bat time, same bat channel, and we'll keep going, okay? So anyway, take care, stay positive, and I'll talk to you all soon.